Coming up on WOW! I never knew that! It helps sketch the imagination of children all over the world. We'll show you the history behind the iconic red frame toy, Etch-A-Sketch. And how did the sexy bikini get its name? The answer is quite explosive. Then, talk about pressure. You'll learn how diamonds take the heat and come out shining like a champ. Also, what are those little thingies called at the end of a shoelace? And why do we sneeze when we look at the sun? This and much, much more next on WOW! I never knew that! Welcome to WOW! I never knew that! The show that answers life's little questions. Hello, I'm JJ. WOW! I never knew that is jam-packed with exciting tidbits and fascinating facts that uncover the truths and origins behind the stuff you're already familiar with. Ever played with this as a kid? I could stay mesmerized for hours. Would you believe this was inspired from a plotting device used for printing graphics? Later, we'll explain the history and origin of the Etch-A-Sketch. But first, take a look at this, and I'll bet you'll say, wow, I never knew that. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ah, uh, Houston, I forgot my lines. The Eagle landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969 when over 500 million people watched as Apollo 11's astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man on the moon. When Armstrong stepped foot on the lunar surface, he said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Only problem, these were not the scripted lines he had prepared. It turns out, Armstrong was supposed to say, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The A somehow went missing. Since the recording equipment and technology at the time wasn't as good as it is today, it's hard to distinguish if in fact the A was spoken. After years of debate, Armstrong has suggested that perhaps he did mess up his lines. Watch out, it's coming right at you. Conceived on the battlefields, shrapnel were fragments from a thrown or fire type of mini-bomb that was meant to kill, injure, or disfigure people. Yeah, this scattering projectile is no laughing matter. Each hollow shell originally contained a bunch of lead bullets and an explosive charge inside a steel case. Soldiers would take these devices and throw them or shoot them off in cannons with each one exploding in midair, causing the lead bullets to shower the enemy with dangerous missiles. The shell case itself became mini projectiles, as it too was shattered into little pieces. The man who invented this device was British soldier, General Henry Shrapnel. No baseball uniform would be complete without a baseball cap. So. I am going to advisor you on its origin. It was 1849 when the New York Knickerbockers first wore a hat made of straw. Then, in 1860, the Brooklyn Excelsiors wore a cap that had a rounded top. But it wasn't until 1900 when the hats similar to the ones that we know today started to become popular. The secret to this particular hat was that the bill or brim protected the player's eyes from the sun, making it possible to look into the sky and still see the ball. Today, virtually everyone has worn a baseball cap, whether playing baseball or not. Sexy women on the beach. They look that way partly because of the alluring outfits they wear, especially those attractive bathing suits, also known as a bikini. But where did the bikini name come from? The answer is atomic. First off, the small two-piece bathing suit dates back to around 1400 BC to ancient Rome. 
It then evolved to a one-piece bathing suit in 1907. But it was the war in the 1940s that caused more skin to be exposed. The U.S. government wanted manufacturers to reduce the fabrics they use. But it wasn't until 1946 when the French engineer Louis Riard made the modern debut of what we now know today. His version of the swimsuit had a lot less fabric than what was common at the time. He thought his idea was explosive. So what could he call his new invention? He needed a name with a bang. And as luck would have it, the United States government recently conducted tests of the atomic bomb at Bikini Atoll, an island among a bunch of other islands in the South Pacific. Those tests were highly charged in the public's eye, and that's exactly the attention he wanted. So he borrowed the name of the island, and the bikini was born. His suits then mushroomed in popularity all over the world. On a hot summer's day, nothing refreshes like creamy, sweet ice cream in a cone. The cone is half the treat. But where did this crispy cone come from? Edible cones date back to 1825, when they were mentioned in French cookbooks. However, it wasn't until 1904 that they really rolled their way into the American psyche. You see, it was during the St. Louis World Fair when an ice cream vendor ran out of ice cream bowls to sell his ice cream. So he partnered with a neighboring waffle stand and then rolled waffles into cones to then fill and top with ice cream. The edible waffle cone has rolled into our bellies ever since. Coming up, how heat and pressure form simple carbon into stunning diamonds and why we pucker up under the mistletoe when we continue. The term Wi-Fi is a trademark of the Wi-Fi Alliance and is the brand name for products using the IEEE 802.11 family of standards. The term Wi-Fi was first used commercially in August 1999 after being coined by a brand consulting firm called Interbrand Corporation that the Alliance had hired to determine a name that was a little easier to remember than IEEE 802.11. Interbrand invented Wi-Fi as a play on words for Hi-Fi, which was a long-established audio equipment classification term used since 1950. Hi-Fi was short for high fidelity, so they thought Wi-Fi would be a good name for wireless fidelity. Hi, it's me again. Listen to this. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check every month may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with the benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Check your zip code. It could be dynamite. Call now. Call 1-800-690-6450. That's 1-800-690-6450 now. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis.
Welcome back. I'm JJ. This is wow. I never knew that. Nothing sparkles quite like a diamond. Now, learn how these sparklers are created from years of heat and pressure. A girl's best friend, diamonds. They are valued as one of the most precious stones on earth. But do you know how they're created? A misconception is they are formed from coal, but it turns out coal rarely has a role in the formation of diamonds. Geologists believe that the diamonds in all of Earth's commercial diamond deposits were formed by natural carbon in the mantle of Earth, about 100 miles below the Earth's surface. Almost 500,000 pounds of pressure per square inch is needed to compress carbon into diamond. And that must take place at temperatures ranging from about 800 to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, after about a billion years, they were delivered to the surface through a type of underground volcanic pipes. Today, most diamonds are found in Australia, Brazil, Russia, South Africa, and Zaire. Diamonds, a real hidden gem. Are you ready for some jiggling information? Gelatin desserts have become a famous dessert around the world. But what if I was to tell you that they are made from animal parts? It turns out they are an important step in the process of making the jiggling treat. You see, skin, cartilage, and bone are removed and then boiled and then soaked and filtered. Then the extract dries to a powder which will then be mixed with sugar, artificial flavoring, food dye, and a few other ingredients to form the dessert that we all know and love. You'll never look at the Jiggle Wiggle the same way again. Bingo! Have you ever played this fun and addicting game? So, how did this game of chance get its start? Well. One day in 1929, a New York toy salesman came across a county fair in Jacksonville, Georgia. He had been traveling across the country selling his wares. As he walked through the arcade and amusement area, he stumbled upon a game packed with people having a good old time. They were playing a game called Beano. It consisted of a hawker calling out numbers that he drew from a small box. Then the players would look at their playing card for that number. Their cards had five numbers horizontally and five numbers vertically. If they had the number called, they'd place a bean on the spot. Whoever covered an entire row won. And to stop the play and announce they had a winning card, the player would yell, Beano! Thinking this was a great game, the toy salesman made a set of the game to play with his friends in his home back in New York. Sure enough, they loved it. And during one game, one of the players got so excited that she accidentally yelled out bingo when she hit all the numbers. Bingo, the new name has stuck ever since. Go ahead and charge it. Nowadays, we all take credit cards for granted, but they haven't been around that long and they were actually invented to avoid businessmen from possible embarrassment. You see, in 1949, a New York businessman took a client out to dinner. Unfortunately, he accidentally forgot his wallet. Luckily for him, his wife happened to have some extra cash. Returning from his trip, he wondered how many other businessmen might have been in a similar situation or just perhaps not having enough cash on them to cover the bill. So he invented a type of membership or club for diners. It would allow members to simply sign for their meals and pay for them at the end of the month. Soon, many dining establishments joined the service. It was an instant hit, and other financial companies created their own type of cards, some offering the same type of perks, while others offered lines of revolving credit. Today, a huge financial industry has been created, all because of a forgotten wallet. It's time to pucker up. Let's kiss under the mistletoe. But what is mistletoe? And why are we locking our lips under it? Well, first off, mistletoe is actually a parasitic plant, meaning it lives off the nutrient of other plants. 
Its leaves are said to have life-giving properties. Also, the red and white berries are a juicy treat for birds. In ancient Rome, priests believed that mistletoe had magical powers. It could cure everything from illnesses to boosting fertility to ensuring good fortune. So, when couples were getting married, they would kiss under the mistletoe, hoping it would deliver a prosperous life ahead. But it was birds that helped create the name. You see, the word mistletoe is derived from the Anglo-Saxon words missile, meaning dung, and tan, meaning twig or branch. When birds relieved themselves on tree branches, they deposited the seeds from which the plant grew. Therefore, missile and tan has a loose translation of bird droppings on a branch. Next, find out what the name is for those things at the end of your shoelace. And I'll take mine with spicy mustard and relish. Find out the origin of the name hot dog. Stick around. Have you ever used the term a grand instead of saying $1,000? You see, in the beginning of the 20th century, $1,000 was a huge sum of money that the average working person would never have had at one given time. So, it only seemed right to pay tribute to such an impressive sum of money with the slang word grand, since it was used in names like the Grand Piano and the Grand Canyon. It meant something was great or impressively large. So the word grand was really just slang for something bigger than life. Some people even shortened it to a G. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now if you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you worked on or lived near a farm or field with ongoing herbicide treatments and developed Parkinson's, call now. A toll-free hotline has been established for victims and their loved ones to get the justice they deserve. There are time deadlines, so don't delay. If you don't win, you pay nothing. Call 800-594-3068. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. If you or a loved one were exposed to Paraquat and later diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Paraquat, a highly toxic commercial herbicide, has been linked to a significant increased risk in developing Parkinson's disease. Call now to find out if you qualify. Don't be a victim. Get the help you deserve. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 800-481-1556. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-257-4866. Hi, we're back. I'm JJ. This is wow. I never knew that. It helps you get your shoes laced up with ease. Now, the history of the little thing at the end of your laces. You loop it, swoop it, and then pull it. Remember as a kid learning how to tie your shoes for the first time? Grabbing the ends of both shoelaces and pulling real hard. Well, do you know what the name of the thing at the shoelace was called? It turns out the plastic or metal sleeve at the very end of the shoelace is called an aglet. The aglets have several functions. They prevent the lace ends from unraveling. They make the laces easier to hold and they make them easier to pass through the lace holes. So where did this name aglet come from? The word aglet comes from Old French aguilette, which is the shortened version of aguille, which means needle. 
and that comes from the original Latin word for needle, acus. So, the next time you go to tie your shoes, perhaps you can tie in a conversation with your friends about aglets. All right, enough skating around the subject. This next segment is on skates. If you ever have gone to a roller rink, you know you have two choices, either roller skates or inline skates. You may think inline skates are new to the scene, but they have been around since the 1700s. It was two Minnesota brothers that saw an older version of the inline skate and thought that they could improve on the design. They thought it would be great for off-season hockey training. They manufactured the first improved pairs in their parents' basement. Soon, everyone was seen cruising around the streets during the hot summer months. Today, there are a few dozen inline skate manufacturers, and the sport has rolled into the record books. Achoo! A sneeze! Sneezing is when your nose is irritated and decides to get rid of the offending matter by blowing air through your nostrils to clean things out. But have you ever sneezed when looking up at the sun? Obviously, sunlight hasn't irritated your nose, right? Well, it turns out it's all in the way we're wired. You see, when your nose is irritated, a nerve in your skull called the trigeminal nerve is stimulated, which then tells your body to sneeze. The reason this happens is because this nerve is very close to the optic nerve that is responsible for sensing an overflow of light entering your retina to your eye. Because they are so close, the theory is that when you look at the sun, some of the electrical signals that are sent to the optic nerve are sensed by the trigeminal nerve, which in turn makes you have a photic reflex or simply a good sneeze. Oddly enough, less than half the population are sun sneezers, and if one of your parents sneezes when looking at the sun, then you have a 50-50 chance that you will too. Get your red hots here! Of course, we're talking about the hot dog. So, where did the name come from? It's a wonderful story. The term hot dog is most commonly attributed to a sports cartoonist named T.A. Dorgan. He had drawn a talking sausage in his sports column after hearing vendors at the New York Polo Grounds yelling, they're red hot, get your docks and dogs while they're red hot. So he called them hot dogs because he couldn't spell the word Frankfurter, the German word for sausage or dachshund, a real, well, German dog. The cartoon was a huge hit. Coming up next, before computers and handheld electronic games, there was one children's toy that stretched the imagination without electricity. Learn the history of the Etch-A-Sketch. Coming up next. For some people, putting their winter clothes away for the season can make them nervous. The fear is that moths can find your fine clothes and have a feast, but this can be prevented with a little cedar. How does this type of wood keep the flying pests away? You see, for moths to get at your clothing, they have to smell it. And like perfume on a person, cedar masks the scent of your clothing. Therefore, if moths can't smell your clothes, they can't find them to do any damage. If you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you worked on or lived near a farm or field with ongoing herbicide treatments and developed Parkinson's, call now. 800-715-2029. One study found a strong association between Parkinson's disease and Paraquat and suggested a two and a half times increased risk. The manufacturers of Paraquat-based herbicides failed to list the health risks of their products and the link to Parkinson's. Whether you used Paraquat-based herbicides or live near treated areas, you could qualify to receive significant financial compensation. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with Parkinson's after exposure to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing Paraquat, call now to get the justice you deserve. Don't wait. There may be time deadlines for financial compensation. If you don't win, you pay nothing. Call 800-715-2029 now. 
travel is getting back to normal. Now is the perfect time to fly somewhere. You can save up to 75% on more than 500 airlines and 300,000 hotels. Use our free service to find the lowest prices we have. You know you're itching to go somewhere, so make this free call right now. We have all the best airline, hotel, and rental car prices all in one place. The best way to get these rock bottom prices is to call. Welcome back to Wow! I Never Knew That! I'm JJ. In a moment, we're going to explain why it's sometimes so hard to get a refrigerator door open. Then, we'll twist some iconic white plastic knobs to sketch some magic with an Etch-A-Sketch. Ever try to open the refrigerator door, but you have to wrestle with it to get it open? So, why does the refrigerator door sometimes feel like it's glued shut? There are two reasons this happens. The first is that when the door is open, warm air rushes into the refrigerator. And then after the door closes, the air eventually cools. This cool air contracts and forms a suction or vacuum. The second is that if you slam the door, it pushes all of the air out and also creates a vacuum. This vacuum is what's causing the door to remain firmly in place. Hey, but chill out. There are a few ways to take the pressure off. Try closing the door gently. This will not displace as much air, so there is less of a chance a vacuum will form. And you can try taping a penny around the door gasket. This will make it easier to break the seal. Now, close that refrigerator door. You're letting all the cold air out. It's a masterpiece! No, don't shake it! Before computer drawing programs, there was a toy that if you mastered its two circular white knobs, you could have a picture-perfect sketch in a beautiful red frame. At this point, you probably know I'm talking about the Etch-A-Sketch. In 1959, French electrician André Cassagne went to the International Toy Fair with his drawing invention an idea that came to him when pencil markings he made on a switch plate's protective decal came off on the other side. We might know this drawing invention today as the Etch-A-Sketch, but originally Cassagne named it Le Cran Magique, or the Magic Screen. Over 50 years later, the Magic Screen's bright red frame isn't showing any sign of gray, making the Etch-A-Sketch an ultimate classic. Here's something interesting you probably didn't already know. The artwork that is created on an Etch-A-Sketch is called lineographic. That means the pen or pencil, or in this case, the stylus, never leaves the drawing surface. Thanks for watching. I'm JJ. I look forward to seeing you again when we'll have you saying, wow, I never knew that. <laughs>